Welcome everyone, my name is uh, Kevin Nguyen. I am the Chief Operating Officer for Elite Mortgage. And on the screen, it just wanna, I wanna reiterate what the syllabus is for the next uh, 10 videos that we're doing. Um, you should have already uh, the last couple of slides or the uh, videos that you should have seen is uh, the first one that we did was on the consultation in 10 or 15 minutes or less. Uh, last time we did the analyze credit income and asset and today what we're looking at is uh, pricing a, a loan, uh, basically completing the initial fee worksheet which is a loan option uh, sheet for us. Then today I'm going to uh, teach you how to do how to uh, read a rate sheet. We'll go over the uh, loan shifter uh, product eligibility and also let me just pull up this one here. Uh, a little tricky with this air mouse. Um, so on here, tonight's uh, training session, we're just going to learn how to read a rate sheet. A lot of these are interactive for, for me to do the screenshot. Uh, you probably wouldn't get the, the, the entire uh, concept of it. So I'll be uh, maneuvering back and forth. But ap after um, you guys watch this video, by the time it's uploaded, you should have all of the screenshots uh, along with uh, a, a handout with a PowerPoint slide. But tonight we'll go over Loan Shifter in case you don't like to go through rate sheet, which is the good old school way of doing it, but with technology, uh, you can enter a few, uh, few fields and they can price it out for you. But I'm gonna show you, in case the internet goes down, how do you do that manually, uh, just to double check, because um, you know, with any computer system, uh, the garbage in, garbage out, if you put something incorrectly into the system or even the system administrator on the lender side, they put it incorrectly, uh, you wanna double check it uh, manually. The initial fee worksheet is probably the most extensive one out of all t uh, tonight. You need to learn how to do that, uh, but we have made it simple for you with a few clicks of the button. Uh, there are still a few things you need to learn how to do, such as checking your uh, tax uh, schedule uh, for how many, how many months of impounds for property tax, along with homeowner insurance. We'll give you those to hand out still. The Calix Point Anti-Steering Loan Option is pretty simple. We kind of uh, we narrow it down to just uh, one rate below that, and I'll show you that. Along with Desktop Originator, if you guys haven't already set up for that, I'm going to show you guys how to do that tonight. You need a credit card. Uh, we're not going to take it all the way through, uh, but because uh, I've already set up my, my own account. Um, but if you don't have that, there's more detailed instruction. You can always call Desktop or Fannie Mae directly. They can walk you through the rest. Well, I'll, I'll show you that you can't take everything uh, for face value. So the information that you get through Loan Shifter, I always explain that it's a guidance. It'll guide you to the right direction, the right lender. It is still your job as a loan officer uh, to double check and verify that information. So you need to verify that uh, with the account executive because a lot of the questions that are asked through the, the uh, system are very basic and broad. When you talk to an account executive, they might ask you and probe a little deeper and say, well, does this pertain to your customer? That's why you want to reach out to your account executive. Your, think of the account executive as your support, uh, your support desk for your loan scenario. Uh, they are your loan scenario help desk. You're going to have any, if you have any situation where you don't like the answer that a, uh, one account executive uh, give you, you can always call one of our other approved lenders. And I'll teach you how to do that in a very systematic and easy way to do it where you can blast it out to your, your uh, our approved lenders. And that way, whoever say yes, then you'll pick up the phone and spend that five, ten minutes to talk to them in more detail. And that, that, fall, that falls into the email blast. We have a system that we use. You don't have to use that. You can uh, mimic and duplicate that through your email uh, using the email template, and I'll show you how to do that too. Approval letter, uh, pre-approval letter will tell you how do you get uh, access to your own pre-approval letter, where you can issue it uh, as, as you know how to run desktop originator. But until then, you can't, uh, you, you can't get access to the pre-approval letter until that point. If the loan does not get approved through your automated underwriting system, you have to give them a note of, of action. Uh, where it's declined, they withdrawn, or, or they cancel the file. Okay, so make sure uh, that's what we're going to cover a lot. It's a lot tonight. I might go a little over for those that uh, can't. I, I understand. Um, but we're going to spend a most of our time in Calix Point uh, and very briefly on the desktop originating uh, uh, software. So right now, because it is on full screen, I'm going to kind of cut back and forth through um, this and see if we have any questions so far. Feel free for those who's watching at home. Um, to, I, I can't do this. <laughs> I'm trying to do the air mouse, but it's just not working. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me, and then I'll kind of jump in and jump back and forth. All right? So I'm going to take you to how to read a rate sheet. I'm going to pull up uh, a rate sheet here. 
And today is today. Today is February the 25th, uh, 2014. We're, we are going to uh, walk you through how to read a rate sheet. And most of them, I took the easy to read one. Um, there's a lot of more complicated one. This one is fairly um, generic and, and templated. But what you see on the rate sheet is, of course, their name, uh, the date, and they usually have the time of when the rate sheet goes out. So for those that don't know, um, just like the stock market, they change every minute. Uh, same thing with mortgage-backed security. They change every about uh, 5, 10, 15 minutes, and you'll see a graph, and I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, but, but the time is so important. If you get a repricing, you have to check the time to make sure you got the right rate sheet. So uh, kind of bring it back to the good old days is that it used to be you stand by the fax machine, and they would fax a bunch of rate sheet over, and uh, a broker shop would have a little clipboard or binder, and, and somebody would put it in there, and you flip through it. Um, now it's all systemized with either the lender login or um, a, a product eligibility service, like a pricing engine, like Loan Shifter. So you have all the contact information here. Uh, do understand that certain lenders have different rate sheet for different companies, for different regions. So the East uh, Coast might have a different rate sheet than the West Coast. Uh, Northern California will have different rate sheet than Southern California. Uh, my our corporate branch might have a different pricing than another branch uh, within the same company. So you got to make sure that you're looking at the right pricing, the right sh uh, rate sheet. On here, if you notice, that'll say uh, there's always a promotion usually. They'll give you a, a quarter percent better or 25 basis point. Uh, better than, than what is shown on the, the rate sheet. Now, if it applies to you, they'll have it on your rate sheet. If not, then they'll take it off. Okay? And if you look at all the approved states, uh, know which state we're, we're approved in. These are their fees, so if you ever take a look at our, our fee worksheet and it's different uh, than the fee that listed here, just let's send an email to centralprocessing at myequityzone.com and then they'll update it. But for the most part, it should be up to date with all the fees that you have there. On the, towards the uh, bottom, uh, uh, lately or a, as recently as the uh, last few years, um, they've been getting a lot of these uh, same question: Who do we make the loss payee to for the homeowner insurance to? They'll put it on the rate sheet now, mm -hmm. and, and then they also have, like for example, um, not only loss payee but for flood insurance for um, a few other things like HOA uh, docs or or who do we uh, put the the note to? Um, if you ever have that question, it should be uh, on here. Uh, on the rate sheet also. They have the rate lock desk. Most of them will, uh, the lock, that close, lock desk close at 4 o'clock. Some close as early as, as uh, 12 o'clock because they're on the East Coast and they, they want to shut it down at 3. So you got to pay attention to when is their, their lock desk closed. Whenever you send out a rate lock confirmation or um, one of your borrower uh, does request for a rate lock, make sure you price that out again just to make sure that, that it, it, you can honor it. Okay. And uh, down here, there are adjustments for different type of uh, lock period. So if you lock from 30-day, uh, all of them usually put a 30-day pricing, or some will start with the best pricing, and they will give you uh, worse pricing uh, from, the 30 day, uh, from, the, uh, from the shortest time. So r rate lock period are usually from 7 days, 10 days, 12 days, 15 days, uh, 14, uh, 14, 15, 20 days, 21 days, 25, 30, and they go in weird, weird numbers. But you'll see that for typically most of them, they'll do 15, 30, 45, 60, as this one uh, shows. Some lenders like to be more aggressive, and they'll do 12, and then they'll jump to uh, 14, uh, I'm sorry, 12 to 20 days. And it's usually about a, a week apart, okay? So pay attention to your lock date, and it expires at the end of that date. As long as you fund the loan uh, on, that, on or before that date, they'll honor that rate price. If you do not uh, close the deal, meaning fund the loan, uh, you don't have to necessarily close escrow, you just need to fund the loan, um, then you've got to pay an extension. So you see on this side, it'll be seven day extension will cost uh, 0.15 or 15 basis point to the client. So if they were receiving a lender's credit, you got to deduct that and now they got to come in with uh, 15 basis point more in fees. Or um, uh, if they were paying discount, you know, same difference, they'll have to pay more on that. These are usually the indices when you're doing adjustable rate mortgage. In today's world, we're, we usually just do like 30 years uh, fixed. There's really not a, any adjustable rate mortgage. But if there is a case where you do that, um, those are your indices that you would fill out in your uh, loan origination software. So we use Calix Point, And I'll show you where to put those information in there also. Uh, these are all informational. This will tell you borrow paid rate sheet. 
Borrow paid is the raw data that everybody would, uh, would, would get. If you see a lender paid rate sheet, they would have already padded it with 150 basis point to 125 basis point, depending upon which company you're with, ERS Nationwide or Elite Mortgage. Uh, if you see lender uh, rate sheet, then it's already padded the compensation in there. If it's not, we need to manually adjust that, okay? Um, on here, the next page, so the first few pages usually is all informational um, um, uh, for, you know, for, for you, for the loan officer. And uh, then you get down to, usually they'll start with conforming uh, government and then any niche product ranging from, uh, you know, streamline refinances, jumbo loan, harp loans, uh, any of those that they have, have uh, for niche products. But within the conforming, you'll see that they usually start with a 30 year, they'll move it down to term 20, 15, 10 years. Um, they'll have home path, this is also a conforming loan, high balance, so you'll see those there. Before you actually look at the rate, you need to make the adjustment. But if, if somebody asks you, what's your par rate, you can look at what is closest to 100. So the way you look at it is 100 basis point is where everybody start. If, if it's at 100 basis point, uh, they don't pay anything and they don't receive any lender's credit. So when I say pay anything, uh, they call it discount point. So discount point is what they will pay to discount the rate from the normal average uh, going rate. So if, let's say the average rate right now, everybody's marketing is four and a quarter. If they want to pay a low rate, they got to pay a, a discount point. And that's what it means. Um, I know it sounds funny when you're discounting, think you're, you're getting a savings, but it's not. It's the opposite. You're actually paying uh, it to save money in the long run, okay? So if you want to think about it, you're almost uh, uh, prepaying uh, the interest upfront to get better savings over the life of the loan, all right? So par is 100. As you go higher in the rate, you know, the, the, it'll go above 100. Anything above 100 is a lender's credit to the borrower. Um, after January 10th of uh, 2010, everything that goes, uh, every rebate, used, it's also known as y spread, uh, yield spread premium, YSP, or they like to call lender's rebate, belongs to the client. So all of it goes to the client. And uh, it would help them pay for the closing costs. Closing costs also includes our uh, origination fee, the loan officer's origination fee. So once we have the par, and you can see that if somebody asks you what is your par rate, you can say today is at 4.125. That is if there is no adjustment based upon their credit, their loan to value, uh, the property type, their occupancy type, uh, all those things. If they had no adjustment, that's what we can offer them, and then they, they would have to pay our, our compensation, of course, whatever we set, uh, uh, set the agreement with for the, the um, loan officer, I mean the, the lender. So we'll go down to, so this is where the rate sheet is, and you're going to go down to um, the adjustment. So you'll see uh, all this is for adjustable rate. Um, this one, they actually tell you uh, if it's Freddie Mac, so up here is for Fannie Mae. It does matter. Whenever you see DU approve eligible, uh, DU stands for desktop uh, underwriter, which is the lender side. As broker, we use desktop originator. So desktop originator, same system just uh, what we use as broker uh, versus what the lender use. And on here for Freddie Mac, they have different pricing. Freddie Mac usually are better with uh, the um, HARP program, they have better pricing. Uh, but overall, uh, for conforming loans, um, it, it, it typically isn't. But um, that's why you'll see a lot of ARM is not comparable to the, the, uh, the fixed loans. So if you look at these, you'll see the adjustable rate loan program features. This will tell you kind of the, the, the lifetime cap, the periodic cap, uh, along with the adjustment caps. So you're uh, the first adjustment cap. Um, to kind of, we're not going to go too much in detail, but on adjustable rate mortgage, uh, you'll see what are three numbers. The first number is what is the maximum percentage that it can adjust at the first adjustment. So if we have a 5-1 arm, that, um, that, that 5, five uh, stand for how long the rate's going to be fixed. It'll be fixed for five, the first five years, then the remaining 25 years, it will adjust according to these caps. And to let you know what that 1 uh, means is how often it, uh, it will adjust. Okay, so this one will adjust uh, every one year. Uh, you'll see a 6, that means every 6 months. Okay. And then um, uh, there, there's some other interpretation that might be one month too. But if they do one month, you'll see the word month behind 
the one. Uh, for for this, this sake, it'll be years. Okay. So the, these numbers, the first number, the two, represent the initial adjustment cap. So after five years, meaning the 61st month, it's going to adjust no more than 2% from its, the starting rate. And it also will not decrease more than, than 2%. So it protects the lender, but also protects the, bar, uh, the borrower too. The second number means um, how, how much can it adjust uh, every peri uh, period thereafter. In this, in this uh, scenario, we have it adjusting every one year. So it, it can adjust no more than, than 2% thereafter from the last uh, rate. So for example, we have something that start at four and a quarter today. And uh, actually on, a, on adjustable, uh, it's closer to about maybe three and, a, uh, three and a half, three and a quarter percent. We'll say it's three and a quarter percent today. Market recovers, the economy recovers, rates are going back up. Now if, if uh, we compare it to the indice, uh, these are the indices here, which is, this one is all based on the one year LIBOR. Um, and it'll tell you what program it is. So on the one year LIBOR uh, today is at 5.53. If let's just say that in um, two year, or in, in five years from now, the indice jump up to, uh, let's just make it absurd, like you know, uh, 7%. The, it, it won't go up there, but just 7%. So if we are at three and a quarter percent and we take the indice of 7%, we add it to the margin, this is the margin of two and a quarter, we would have a new rate of 9.25%. So if we were to adjust at that time, making this at 7%, and the margin, our margin stay constant, it'll be two and a quarter. You add the two and a quarter, the margin plus the index uh, to be nine and a quarter. Because we started at three, three and a quarter percent, it can't adjust more than five and a quarter when it first adjusts. That protects the rate from, from jumping too, too high. But you notice that on the seven and 10 year, it has a higher first time adjustment at 5%. So in that example, if we had a seven plus that, uh, it would jump up to five plus our three and a quarter would be eight and a quarter, okay? So it, it would go up to whatever the first adjustment. Then thereafter, that second number is the periodic. So every year thereafter that, that initial fixed period, it will adjust no more than 2% or decrease no more than 2%. The last number is the lifetime cap. The lifetime cap of, of the loan. Uh, it can adjust more than 6% above our, uh, our initial start rate. So if our start rate is th uh, three and a quarter in this example, uh, the rate can no, uh, cannot exceed more than 9.25%. Uh, so if we did have a 7% here and it adjusted to two and, uh, plus the two and a quarter, that's the highest it would go. But if the economy keep improving and the interest rate keep uh, getting better, um, uh, then it can, if it jumped to eight, they can't cap it out more than that nine and a quarter percent. Okay, so I know that's uh, quite a, a lot of information. We'll have the, the handout on the formula for that, uh, but to kind of sum up on adjustable rate mortgage, um, to, re to calculate the then current interest rate, you take the margin plus the then uh, current index, whatever that month is, is uh, set to adjust. These are your initial adjustment, the first number, your periodic adjustment, and then your lifetime cap adjustment. On how to read these numbers on the arm, is, uh, the first number is the period that is going to remain fixed, the rate, the initial fixed rate period. Uh, the second number is how often it will adjust in years, unless you see the, uh, the, the month in front of it. So with the adjustable rate mortgage, you, you can uh, you know, uh, uh, just understand that we're not in that market, so uh, you're, you're probably not going to have a lot of those. If you do, uh, just come see me. I can explain it in a little bit more detail for you. Uh, better yet, attend our lender presentation. Uh, they usually uh, uh, talk this, uh, about this in more, more in depth, and they can ask your question. Um, our lender presentation are uh, held up to three times per week. On Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, they have morning appointment, uh, morning uh, presentation, afternoon, and also evening. So continuing forward with the uh, adjustment, um, if you go down uh, to where it'll say uh, on these price adjustment, it'll tell you that Fannie Mae, if you're doing a Fannie Mae and a high balance, uh, these are the adjustment. So it's very simple on the LTV and the FICO. If we were uh, buying a house with 20% down, our loan to value would be 80%. On 80% loan to value, if we uh, took 80 here, we're 75 to 80. If you're at 80.01, then you move over to the next tier right here. At 80%, if I have a credit score of 740 or better, 
I actually get a better, an improvement in my, in my rate uh, by a quarter percent. Um, so I'm sorry, uh, this one here, I'm sorry, you're, you're going to get hit. Uh, so this is a, a negative. And be careful too because each lender like to use a parenthesis, a negative sign or a positive sign. Uh, uh, and they use the opposite. Just make sure you, you understand that. But uh, empty parentheses is the negative. So if um, I wanted to actually show you this example, was that at 75% loan to value at 740, there's no pricing adjustment. So that's their sweet, sweet spot. That's what they want to sell. If they have a lower FICO score, then we just got to hit them uh, with a quarter percent. So if I were to, let me grab this here. I'm going to give you a loan scenario. I'm going to show you the pricing uh, online versus what, what is here. So if I have an 80% loan to value and I have a 740, it's going uh, to hit me at 0.25%. I'm doing a single family resident, owner occupied, keeping it simple on, on a purchase. Uh, the next adjustment I would go down to is look at the cash out refi, which doesn't apply to me. So I'm going to skip that section. On here, um, we got a subordinated financing. Uh, for that we're not going to have any subordinating just mean a, a, a equity line or, or a second loan. Uh, it might be even a third loan, uh, but we don't have that in this lending environment. Any loan feature adjustment, if I were to uh, buy a different type of, of property, two unit, three unit, condo, uh, any type, I would hit them for that. So um, I'm going to keep it simple. We don't have any of these. We're just doing a single family resident. Uh, we're not doing an investment. If the loan amount is less than, than 75000 or, um, and let me see here. So if it's less than, than uh, 75, you got to hit them with that. But if it's between uh, 75 and 150, you hit that. So anything above 150 with this lender, there's no adjustment. Okay. Um, manufactured home, and if in California, you can waive your impound, your property taxes, your homeowner insurance, um, if, if you have at least 10% equity, meaning put at least 10% down. Uh, then you can waive it. If you do, they're going to hit you depending upon your uh, loan to value and, uh, and then they'll, they'll, uh, they'll adjust accordingly for this. All right. I'm going to, because I'm doing a, just a conforming loan, I'm going to look at this section only because as I scroll down, uh, this goes into DU refi uh, pricing adjustment. So then that's the only adjustment I would have. Um, but of course, the worse the credit, the more adjustment you're going to have. The different type of property, occupancy type, the more adjustment you're going to have. But to keep it simple, I wanted to just go with a simple 80% loan to value, owner occupied, single family resident uh, purchase. Okay. Now, if if we didn't look at the first page, we would have missed uh, a pricing, and that pricing that we we saw on the first page, it said that if we did a purchase within February, um, we would get a quarter better in February. As long as you lock it, you don't have to close it. As long as you lock the loan in February, they'll give you 25 uh, basis uh, point better. So make sure you take a look at whatever promotion they have here. I'm going to hide. I'm going to highlight this here. So th that also becomes my pricing adjustment. Okay. Now um, th that is, is is how you do adjustment, and we would always take all the adjustment first. So right now I have a negative uh, 0.25. So I'll pull up my calculator here. If I do uh, 0 0.25, uh, so I'm putting a negative right here. Whoops. So I do uh, a negative, and then because I get a better improvement by a quarter, that would wipe out. So I got a positive 0.25. There's no adjustment. For, for me for this particular loan. But you still got to manually um, list all your adjustment first. Okay? So when you have these adjustments, uh, you're going to go to your pricing. Remember that if you do lender paid, you need to know what our compensation is. Um, on your, if you're with Elite Mortgage, which is the BRE, uh, you just need to remember 150 basis point um, a plus a flat fee for the processing. For those that do not have, uh, you know, you, you're, you're going to kind of get familiar with it as you work with um, the lenders, uh, but uh, if for those kind of starting out, let me show you here.
So on here, um, it will tell you what our, our pricing is. So you just kind of look here at New American Funding. We're at 150 basis point. And then uh, because they don't allow us to do a flat fee, you just add 25 basis point to the 150. Um, so you need to deduct 175 basis point uh, into your pricing adjustment. And so to kind of put it on paper for you to see a little bit better, I don't know if you guys see this. I'm going to put on Word. So we started out with a quarter, so a negative. And I'll, I'll, I'll make this bigger. So we started out with a negative 25 basis point. And then they gave us a positive 25 uh, basis point for our, um, our purchase special. Let me just lay this out here. And this is for um, LTV. We got hit for our LTV being at 80% and with a FICO of uh, 740. So we're at 80% uh, and 740 FICO. Okay. So that is uh, makes it zero out. So we're at zero basis point. But because our lender pay compensation is 150 basis point plus a 25 for the processing or flat fee, which is essentially the, the processing, that would mean that we have to have 175 basis point. And of course, that's a negative. Okay, so that's our, our uh, pricing adjustment. Got to make sure you do all the adjustment first. So if we're doing lender paid, we need to, um, and actually just for anything there. Uh, let me do, okay. So this thing, there we go. All right. So once we go, we have the total adjustment, we want to go back to our product. Again, we're doing a, just a 30 year um, conforming here. You want to see if we are at negative 175 and we want to give um, maybe a competitive pricing where it's not costing the borrower too much. Just to let you know, most, loan, most, most borrower are accustomed if they bought homes uh, kind of pr uh, prior to 2009, they're used to paying 1% origination just for the cost of, of getting a loan. Um, I like to keep it where the cost is, is, is as close to zero but no more than 1%. Because you can explain it to them, hey, the cost is about this much, this is what we charge. And most lenders, uh, other lender will do the same, they'll charge you 1%. If, if you do the math and you know that we need a 101.75 in order to get it to par where it doesn't cost anything, the closest one we're going to get is uh, between here. So we're going to have a 101. And then if uh, we go here, which are these two rates, then it's our choice right now to decide do we want to uh, have a little bit of cost, uh, meaning that they come in with, with slightly about point, uh, point 0.19 or so for the discount point? Or do we want to give them a little bit of credit, which is roughly about 0.6 or so on the, on the credit, okay? So your, uh, this is where the pricing, if you did a manual one and, and they wanted to get close to par as possible where you get your compensation, we would offer a rate of 4.375 or 4.5 with this lender. This doesn't mean that this is the best priced lender. Uh, out of that. That's just one lender. So we want to use a uh, software like Loan Shifter in order for you to figure out is this the best price and that's why we, we subscribe to that service. So I'm going to take a little uh, break here, uh, not break, but I'm going to see if there's any question uh, regarding the adjustment. Um, I'm going to kind of recap. I don't see anything here, but if you have any question, please type it in. Um, I tend to kind of go over something and if you get lost, it's kind of hard to follow for the rest of the way. Um, Recap, get all your adjustment together, 
So we have our adjustment here. And then you want to make sure you put in your uh, compensation, your lender's compensation, depending upon what we have on our sheet. So our sheet will be, uh, I'm sorry, here. So we'll go to the lender and just check this sheet here, our comp plan plus the flat fee. Okay. And then once you have your total adjustment, you know that you got a negative this to get the par pricing. You want to go back to your rate sheet and figure out where do you want to price it. So if the borrower did say that, hey, I want more credit, I, don't want, I want to come in as little as possible, then you just simply quote them a higher rate and they can get more credit to pay for, uh, for their closing costs. So somebody might say, I want a no closing cost loan. You need to figure out what the dollar amount is and then see if that's, that's enough based upon that. So you just increase the rate uh, where, where then they'll, they'll just pay for the closing costs. So that's how people do no closing cost loans, is that they just increase the rate. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. All right. Now, the next thing I want to show you is a little bit, um, if you got this one, uh, this one you can, you can probably figure this one out. Um, if you notice that some of our, our lenders um, have a flat fee, it's not quite as simple. For example, let's just say this one here, they do a flat fee of six ninety five. I'll go up here because you guys can't see that one uh, clearly. But Carrington will give us the our lender pay compensation one fifty, and they'll allow us to do a flat fee of six ninety five. That's that six ninety five is is meant to pay for the processing, which is six fifty. Uh, we try to get as close as six fifty uh, as much as possible. So each lender would have a tier. They'll go four ninety five, five ninety five, six ninety five, seven ninety five. Some might just go from four fifty to six fifty. Uh, I'm sorry, five hundred to uh, seven fifty, and they might not have anything. We always go over the six fifty if it's not enough, or else we'll have to take it from your compensation. So that's why those numbers varies. It's all depend upon the lender. Okay. So how do you convert a six ninety five into a basis point? Because you need to in order to price it correctly, right? So um, in our case, uh, we're going to just say that the loan amount is uh, th they're buying a house for 350, and they're going to put down 20 percent. So that means our loan amount is 80 uh, percent of 350 would be 280,000. Okay, so 280. If you have the loan amount, you want to take your uh, the flat fee. In this case, is 695. We have 695 divided by 280. That will give us a basis point. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of translate this a little bit, but I'm gonna pull up the sheet. So on on that, if you take your uh, loan amount, so we got 280 divided by your flat fee of 695 you get your basis point. And this basis point will look like this, 0 .00248. Um, what you want to do is take, the, take it to, I guess, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven digit across. So I'm going to put, um, it looks like this. That's what it looks like on the calculator. Just move your decimal two places. I'm sorry, uh, four, pa four places. And then it'll convert it to, so you just move it over four places, okay? So just make sure you move that decimal over four places. And then that'll give you your basis point. The basis point, you want to get it down to 24 point uh, to, what is that, the, the, the thousand decimal place? And then round it up. So in this case, if we have a four in the back here, uh, it would just keep it at one. But if you want to be safe, just, I just round it up just to make sure that it goes over and then under. So I just round it up to the two. So that would be our basis point. So when you're doing your math, you can, uh, you can add it. Because in our example up here, you have 150 basis point, And this one was easy because there's a basis point here. Um, you need to convert this. So this one wouldn't be quite 25 basis point, but it'll be 24.822. Okay. Same idea, but whenever there's a flat fee, you need to convert it. And that means just moving, getting that, and then moving it four decimal over.
to the right and then cut it off on, on the, the thousand. Any question on that? I do have a question. You know what? Somebody did correct me. Jack did say, right? Um, he said that it should be the other way. I did on the calculator. It, it actually is just the other way. Thank you for correcting me, Jack. It should, do, it should look like that. So 695 divided by 280,000. I said it right, but I didn't write it down right. Okay. So that's how you convert any uh, flat fee into a basis point. It's very important when you're doing the pricing adjustment manually. All right. Um, any question regarding the adjustment um, and adding on our lender fees along with, um, you know, a flat fee? Let me check the question. I think there's another question. I. So Tammy asked if they have three and a half percent down, then they can pay for MI with the higher rate too. Um, that's a good question. There are some people who said I don't like to pay the upfront mortgage insurance uh, premium because FHA is currently. Uh, a better rate than conventional and historically is always always is but when you add in the uh, monthly mortgage insurance which is usually higher than the monthly mortgage insurance for conventional the cost for FHA is much higher than a conventional uh, but but the rate as you can see will be lower so Tammy's question is can't they just increase the rate in our example was said if if they want more lenders credit to pay for the closing costs uh, Tammy asked can we increase the interest rate use the lender, lender's credit and pay for the upfront mortgage insurance. So for those that don't know, if in order for you to get, even obtain an FHA loan, uh, doesn't matter if you put down uh, whatever your down payment is or what your credit score is, um, you, everybody is required to pay a 1.75% one-time fee, it's called upfront mortgage insurance premium, just to obtain an FHA loan. So a lot of loan officers would increase the rate Get it, get enough of 1.75 and pay it, so it doesn't get financed into the loan amount. So the answer to Tammy is yes, you can increase the interest rate in order to pay, uh, pay off or pay down the, the upfront mortgage insurance premium. One thing I do want to warn you is that some lenders will not allow a partial payment. You either pay all of it, the whole 1.75, or none. It's one or the other. Some will allow you to do partial. So they'll say, you want to pay down by a little bit? Okay, we'll let you. So check with the lender. Make sure that whatever your, uh, the initial fee works you're giving to your borrower, um, it actually uh, 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 or, uh, was it comply to their lend, uh, the lender's guideline. Okay. Um, so rate, rate SB 175-150, what is that? Um, can you spell out SB for me? I don't know what the acronym means, Tammy. Uh, and then Jack asks, can you please explain adjustable uh, 226 again? Sure. So I'm going to go over everything uh, one more time, but if it goes to three or four times, we'll, we'll move on. Okay. Uh, for, for the caps, if we go back to the cap sheet um, here, you'll take a look at these numbers. I'm going to spell it out for you so, that, so you guys can see it a little bit easier. On, on this sheet here, The first number represent the initial, basically the max initial uh, rate adjustment. And it's always called cap. The second one, so let me just put, uh, let me adjust this here. The second number uh, represent the max periodic rate adjustment cap. So this is the initial. This is the periodic. And then the, the next one is the lifetime. Okay, so those are the numbers that you see, the 226 on this example. You see the 226 
it means uh, what is the maximum rate that it can increase or decrease initial the first adjustment the second number is the periodic uh, every time it adjusts every year and then the lifetime is uh, over the, the whole term of the loan for 30 years what is the max it can adjust so Tammy said it should be 4.375 is 1.569 versus 4.52 2.43. So we want to be close to 1.5 and charge the processing fee. Or we want to be closer to the 1.75 because that's going to be what the lender deducts. Um, so the question Tammy asked was when we are looking at this rate sheet, and we got these two rates because of my, uh, our adjustment that we put up here is that we need 175 basis point uh, because we were the compensation at 150 and the flat fee or the processing fee is a quarter uh, that makes our total adjustment at 1.75 her question is do we price it closer to the 150 or the 175 you want to take the full uh, full uh, adjustment between the the lender pay comp plus the flat fee so it'll be closer to 175 when you make this adjustment Okay. So leave no student behind. Anybody have any other question before we move on? All right. So um, learning how to do, read the rate sheet is very important um, and saving the rate sheet is actually even more important. Whenever I, I've had it where um, lenders would say we never priced it that way, their system was wrong. But I saved it and they had to honor it. So do save all your rate sheet that you do price your, your initial fee worksheet with and save it, okay? Uh, highlight, like the way I do. You see these highlight tools that I have that I'm showing you right here? This is free, even though it said Adobe Professional. All of uh, the free reader would have something called Common and Markup. This is an older version. The new one is like 11 or something that's free. They'll always have something called a highlighter. Um, if you go to something to the uh, effect of comment, uh, review, You'll, you'll see a comment markup tool and there'll be something like a highlight text tool. Um, what we also use is a text box tool. Um, we like to use it like this. If I click on, not textbook, but uh, this box right here. And let me see what that box is called. It's called a call out tool. The call out tool, if you start here, you drag it out and you click here, it'll put an arrow and allow you to type. And then you can put uh, you know, whatever you want here. however you want. But that is a free tool that everybody have access to. And if you, uh, there's other tools, you can put a box if you don't like the highlight. You can do that. And then you can do all um, among other things, okay? Um, and I wouldn't pay to, to client, but you know, you know what I mean, type. Okay. All right. So any question, and by the way, um, a lot of people, if you, if you made a mistake like I did right here, just click on it, hit delete, it'll delete it for you for any highlight markups and so forth. So pricing adjustment, pretty simple. Just add up all your adjustment. Uh, make sure you include our lender pay compensation and then uh, take it away from their par pricing or the pricing, okay? So on the rate sheet, Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, 15 to 30 day under mm -hmm. all their heading. Yes. And those are just the rate lock time periods that you can buy. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the last question? That would just be the, the uh, time frame for the, the rate lock. Yes. So the question is when you see these um, rate lock period, 30 days, 45, um, those are uh, not necessarily how long it takes you to close the loan, but since the day you lock it to the day you fund it. Uh, not necessarily when you close it. So you can actually fund it on the day it expires and then record it the next day. So another example would be you would fund it on a Friday when the rate lock expires. Because it's the weekend, county doesn't open and you can't record it to Monday, your rate lock's still good. So you can fund it on a Friday and close it on a Monday and the rate lock's still okay. And then um, I wanted to show you that 30 days and 45 days doesn't necessarily mean your only option. It's just the way they make it look clean on the rate sheet. If you wanted to do a better pricing, you can go up to here. It will say you can get a better uh, 0.2 better if you do a 15-day lock. Okay? 
or you can do a, a half 50 basis point worse if you do a 60 day lock. So those might be additional adjustment that you want to include and that might fall under the uh, adjustment that we have here. Okay. I want to zoom in a little bit here. All right. All right. So um, all of the ratio are similar uh, and it's just different product. You want to make sure you look at it. I'm going to pull down to uh, this heart program here. So heart, you'll see that is very little adjustment, but these adjustment, um, if you look at this here, it's, uh, it's, it's in addition to, um, so, uh, well, you got to read the note. If you're doing anything less than 15 years, none of these apply. Uh, there's a max, but you still need to do these adjustment here um, and it's hard. Let me just make sure here. Um, so each section would have their own uh, type of adjustment, but read it. If it says in addition to our conforming uh, adjustment, then you need to make those. So it would say Fannie Mae conforming high balance. Uh, this one does not say it's in, in addition to. So each section should have its own pricing adjustment, but be careful, be wary, and read it and say this is in addition to or it's by itself. In this case, it's by itself. Okay. Excuse me one second. I don't know. Every time I get here, it's just always the running nose. One second. I wanted to show you if there's an additional adjustment um, that might be worth mentioning. I looked it over. I don't think there was, but I just want to double check. Okay. And um, I did notice this. If you guys run DO, you're gonna re they're, they're going to need uh, this ID when you're running DO. Um, so uh, lenders, if you guys ever have questions, the processor always have this information. This is it's best if you just send it to them, get the correct information. But if you're uh, working on the weekend and, and they're they're out of the office, you can find a lot of this information on the rate sheet. So here's your VA uh, ID for the lender. In order to run it using their underwriting guideline, you need that number. So if, when you run desktop originator, you'll you'll grab it from here. Okay, and usually it's around the um, the FHA or VA government section. Okay, now I'm going to show you the easy way. This is the way you do it for uh, a manual. And then there is um, the easy way of doing it through Loan Shifter. And um, it's even simpler if you, you, you originate the, the lead in, in Calix Point. Um, by now, you should know that we use Calix Point Central, not the standalone version. So your standalone version is not connected to our templates. It's not connected to um, you know, what we manage. And you can see the difference um, if you're kind of used to, let me put this, used to working on a standalone version. Uh, we changed the password. I wrote it down. Give me one second here. So I'm going to pull up a training file. It should open. And we're going to match it up to uh, to what we wanted, which uh, is our 300, uh, our 350. We're about 20% down. On a purchase, we do a conventional purchase here. If you like it to give you the best pricing, uh, delete this. It'll be red, but you can run it. We'll go to interface, product and pricing. Uh, click on Loan Shifter. Hit OK. Hit Launch Loan Shifter. And um, you don't have to do da double date entry. It'll just pull it in uh, directly into Loan Shifter.
So you notice that everything that we type in Calyx Point, it'll pull it in. Uh, it'll give me today's pricing at 5%. Okay, so what's, uh, you're probably asking well, why is it giving me 5%? Uh, one of the reasons why is I, uh, we didn't pull the credit and it's shown zero FICO score. So we need to change this to 740 uh, on based upon that example. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit submit again. And now give me the pricing of 4.375. Um, we're going to go down to our New American because I have that rate sheet here. And this one, if you look at New American, it'll say Loan Prospector. And this one will say uh, Desktop uh, Underwriter. Okay. So there are two different conforming products. You want to make sure you price it out with the right one. Um, and you can always use one or the other unless we're doing a harp and it has to be owned by Freddie, uh, Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae. Uh, but when you're doing a purchase, it really doesn't uh, apply too much there. So we, I can go with this, and when, what I wanted to show you was that they do the pricing adjustment for you. So if, uh, if I finish up this here, and because we have 4.375 showing up here, I'm going to go to my adjustment, and uh, we know that's 1.75. I'm going to go to my rate again up here to our 30-year fix. And it's showing me a 4.375 is at 1.569. Now, why do you think if we have no adjustment and we're looking at um, Loan Shifter over here? This thing's killing me. I'm going to do this. <laughs> okay. So we're, we go Loan Shifter here. We have a uh, new pen here, or uh, I'm sorry, new American funding. And it shows me at a cost of 1.14, correct? And that is, that is correct. Because if we took 1.75, I'm just going to, uh, we'll do 1.75. And then on our pricing sheet, it shows uh, 1.569 well, minus a 1.569. I just omit that 100. It, you know, we just do that. So it gave me a 0.181. So we need to figure out why is the pricing different? It's by slightly, not not much, but it is different. And most of the reason, most of the time, is because of the the rate sheet that we have. If we take a look at this 1.1, um, it was it was published at 8:48 a.m. It was updated there, and we just need to click on this, and it'll download the rate sheet. We'll open it up just to make sure we have the right sheet. And this one is the exact same one, 8.15, uh, 815. It's the same rate sheet. This time just up is, is saying that when it was uploaded here. So, so why is there, there a difference on here? We need to figure that out. Okay. So on here, if you click on this pricing, it will actually do the adjustment for you. So we did it right. Our, our thing was that, hey, we got a uh, loan to value up to 80% at 740. And then, um, so we got that here. It showed negative. Then we got a quarter purchase special. So we got it right here. What can you guys see that is incorrect if we got the pricing adjustment correct? So take a second, just kind of look at that. Uh, why, why, is, why is it off by ever so slightly? Check on the uh, webinar, see if you guys can figure out the answer. So it's our adjustment. And what, what do we have here for the adjustment on our lender pay comp? We have 175 basis point, whereas in our loan shifter, it shows that we're only get a 1.732. Why? Why is that number weird? Why do you think that number is a little off? Whenever it's not a round about number where it's a 150 plus 75 or 25 basis point, it's because there's a flat fee tied to that lender. Now, one of one of the two is incorrect. Either our lender uh, fee sheet 
or loan shifter. So one of them needs to be adjusted. So whenever you guys see this here, that's why you always want to manually check it yourself before you offer the pricing. Okay. So um, what is, if we know it's 150, and I'm going to do some math here for you. If we got a 1.732 minus 1.5. So we're at a 232 uh, basis point. And I divide it by our loan amount of 200,000, uh, 280,000. Um, whoops. Uh, do it the other way around. So 280. Let me do it again. 1.75 minus, uh, I'm sorry, 1.732 minus uh, 1.5. We're at 0.232. So we do 280 divided by 0 0.00232. Um, that's not right either. Let's <laughs> see here. 0 0.00232 by 280. I think the E is throwing it off. Hang on here. We're at 280. It's times, actually. So uh, the flat fee is about 250 bucks or 650 bucks on the flat fee. That's why we're getting that weird uh, number. So uh, loan shifter is showing it as a flat fee, but our lender list is showing it as a quarter basis point. Okay. So I just want to show you that this does it for you, uh, but again, uh, it's, it's only as accurate as whatever we put into it. Okay. I'm guessing this is the correct fee, but um, and this might be off our our sheet here. On here, I'm thinking this is incorrect. Okay. All right. So moving along here, um, let me look at the question. There you go. Jack figured it out. Uh, multiply 280 by 0 0.232. Okay. All right. Some good guess. Uh, 15 years and February credit was not given. Um, we'll figure that out there. All right. Okay. And by the way, you can always go to Loan Shifter directly if you don't have Calix Point, and you can um, log in here. But we use Calix Point whenever you can to uh, just have it carried over. Okay. So I wanted to kind of uh, let you know when you when you do do Loan Shifter, you want to print this here. You want to print this, the price adjustment up here, and then you also want to save the rate sheet. So uh, in case you want to go back and, and price it out again. All right, any question with loan shift and what it does versus a manual rate sheet? I wanted to um, move on to the IFW. Now you got the pricing. What do you do with it? So we're talking about the initial fee worksheet. Once you print it out, uh, we're going to go into Calix Point. I'm going to show you how to do that along with the anti-steering loan option. Uh, desktop originator, we'll, we'll carry that in a second. On our um, fee worksheet, I'm going to use the same uh, example, but before I do that, I'm actually going to print these for our uh, training purpose here. And you'll see that when I hit print, this is going to take the longest. Uh, what it does is print out the whole results on this page here. So I'm just going to open it because uh, we're going to need it. Uh, normally you would save it. I like to open it and then go here and save it into my folder, save as. The next thing uh, that I told you you need print, I'm going to go to our, our New American. I chose New, New American with no favoritism. I just use it for, for the sake of simplicity. Uh, choose whoever you want it um, on here. Hit the print, we'll get the pricing adjustment. I'll open that. And of course, we want our rate sheet, which I click over here. I'll hit open, and I'll use that there. Okay, so I'm going to leave this here just uh, for that. And, and there's a lot more um, what you can uh, do training. There's a little training here if you want to learn more about Loan Shifter after you sign up with them. I'm going to go back to our page. now. For those that have loan, uh, Calix Point right now on the webinar, I'd like you to follow me on this here. Um, and I want you to rearrange your, your toolbar. It's going to help you out when you start doing this IFW and DSP. Um, so let's, let's just do it together. If you go up to Utilities, you're going to go down to, you're not going to have all this uh, you know, available, but it doesn't matter. Just go to Customize Shortcut Toolbar. Let me give you a second. Uh, write this down and maybe these guys, if you already have it open, you can follow along. Uh, open up any file or even uh, in the main screen. Go to Utilities, down to Customize tool, uh, Shortcut Toolbar. From here, we're going to move all the stuff that you need up. Okay? So uh, what we're going to do is there's only like five toolbar. I'm going to start from the bottom up 
uh, just to keep it in, in order. So from the bottom up, what we're going to uh, move are sure here. So we're going to move. Uh, so move this. Put anti-steering. You're going to move. Uh, move to top. Click on that. So your anti-steering. Then you're going to move your request for 4506. Move to the top. You're going to move your truth and lending to the top. You're going to go to your good faith estimate, move it to the top, and then you're going to move your fee worksheet to the top. And the reason why we move it this way, um, with the exception of this, I'm going to move this uh, anti-steering up a little bit here. I'll move it to the top and move it back down. So you want to, you want to work, if you do these uh, one, two, three, four, five forms, um, in addition to your loan application, of course. Uh, and also, guys, if you hit this button, don't do it. If you hit the smart, the more uh, the more frequently you use it, will rearrange your 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 toolbar. So don't check this box. Leave it at default. and just show the scroll bar. Uh, so it should look like fee worksheet, anti steering, good faith, truth in lending, request for tax, and it goes to the borrower then loan loan application. So when you do this, your your uh, if you fill out uh, this part here, then move up here, you'll have all your disclosure. Uh, all this is not necessary for a loan officer. It's only necessary for processing. So if you rearrange it, it'll keep it a little bit more orderly. So you, you, it's like a checklist of what you need to do. So when you're working on a file, just go to uh, borrow information, which is the home page, so to speak. It has all the summary. Then you fill out your loan application here. Once you're done, um, and this one I'm going to put, because we're going with a 4.375, for example, I'm going to put a borrow score of 740 all across. Uh, normally, when you pull in the credit score, it'll pull it in. This is just the minimum credit score required for that loan program. Uh, these are the actual credit score. The system is smart enough to figure out the middle. Um, so today we're going to go touch on the fee worksheet. Uh, again, I want to recap. This is a purchase on the 350,000, 20% down. We're doing a 4.375, and we want to give the borrower uh, the, uh, the the fee worksheet, the breakdown of the fees. First thing first, you should have you should change your loan program if it changed from the first time you used to create this file. Uh, we're still going to go with a 30-year fix. It's just conventional. There's a list of other programs, FHA, VA. If you don't see any uh, loan program, the loan program you need to use, uh, it will say add more, send it to TC at my equity zone. They'll add it for you. When you click on that, you'll see that it fill in the minimum credit score, the, the interest rate. So I'll show you here. If you see 620 here and 425, if I select the FHA 15-year, uh, it'll okay. It'll change the rate and the minimum credit score. Okay. Um, Going forward, the, we uh, we have a mortgage uh, assistant that will update this on a daily basis, based upon a 70% loan to value, 740 FICO score, owner occupied, single family resident. Um, so it's it's always the one that most of our competitors advertise. Uh, so it's not necessarily the rate that you are you you entered in here. I'm going to switch back to a 30 year. On our closing cost scenario, we want to pick our lender, and this. Uh, case performance wholesale is uh, they changed their name they merged with new American funding this is our current lender here depend upon your on DBO or BRE we're just going to go with BRE uh, here when we when we click on that it does um, things on the fee worksheet okay so we're going to go once we pick the loan program and along with the closing cost scenario we're going to go to our fee worksheet and you'll notice that it, uh, most of these these things are filled in. You notice that on our loan shifter, it shows a 650 flat fee, so it filled it in. Our compensation is 1.5. This fills it in. Um, the lender fee is at 995. Now, I think I saw that performance on the first page actually increased their fee to 1,000, right? 995. They've increased by uh, five bucks. So we need to make sure that we change it to make it accurate. To a thousand. So we'll, uh, whenever you see things like this, uh, minute changes, if you wouldn't mind helping us uh, send it to uh, TC at My Equity Zone and have them update that. 
So the fees are pulled in, the compensation are there, um, and I just want to show you kind of what, what is filled in here, all of these uh, generic fees, and then we're going to fill this out. Always put today's date that you're preparing the fee. Um, a short uh, shortcut would be hold down on your keyboard the control plus D. D for date. Control plus D. And it'll fill in today's date. Always put the first, um, I start with the first closing date. When do you or estimate closing date before I put the first payment date? So to estimate close date, if we're in February, it's a purchase. Uh, let's say they got into contract. We got a third day close of escrow. Uh, pretty simple to figure out that in February, there's 28 days. Uh, we just add two more days from the 25th. So on the 20, well, it will be March 25th plus two days. We're going to probably close by the 27th, no later than the 27th. If our close of escrow date is in March 20, on March 27th, our first payment date is always at least 30 days from the close of escrow and always on the first of the month. So that would make it our uh, first payment be May 1st. Once you scroll down here, you, you shouldn't have to touch anything on Section 1, our origination charge, but you do have to change the, um, the discount and also the credit. So we're going to pull up our, our sh um, the one we got from Loan Shifter, or um, you know what, I'll keep it s with this here. If we had our rate sheet. And we know that we're going to get uh, 4.375 with uh, 1.569. And we did the math, uh, which we already have here. It would show that on a 4.375, I get a 1.14. Uh, or it will cost a 1.14, which will pay our compensation already. Okay. So we just take this here at a 1.14. Since it's in red, it's a cost to the borrower. And if I offer a 4.375, I, um, I would just put a discount. Whoops, let me go back here. I put a discount of 0.114 because uh, it's already got a compensation built in here. And our compensation, uh, to kind of let you uh, refresh your memory, our compensation shows here, 1.5, and then that's 650, which makes it that 1.732, okay? So we would put that 0.114, I think that's what it was, 0.114. I would put in our rate of 4.375, and then this would be uh, the rate for that or I mean the cost for that particular rate, okay? So we gotta put what we're getting, uh, what we're receiving, and then uh, this is the credit. If you put the discount, it'll, it'll kinda, it'll uh, adjust to that, okay? Down here, the next thing you do is just click on the closing uh, escrow fee. If the purchase, you would have the escrow uh, estimated HUD from the borrower, uh, I mean from the title company, but if you don't, just click on one of these generic fees uh, pick one of these, any, anyone, which we'll is put First American. Click on this lender title. Click on whichever lender. Again, if you don't have, uh, we don't have your preferred title or escrow company, just let us know. We'll add it. And it'll fill this here based upon the purchase price and, uh, and also the loan amount. On the, only on purchase will you do the owner's title insurance. You click here and you put uh, those and it will show the owner's title insurance there. You're going to scroll down to City. Uh, transfer tax. So this is the city transfer tax. They've uh, included uh, quite a bit, but um, I think it's. But not all of them are in here. Uh, some are missing. Uh, if it, if your city's not not listed, let us know. But everything should be in there. So for this sake, we'll put Sacramento. And I hit the down arrow. It'll go to Sacramento. Um, or you can put S. Hit the down arrow, and then it'll go down to towards the S. Okay, uh, and of course you can always kind of scroll and, and look, look at the list this way. I'll hit OK. And it's Sacramento County. I'm going to type in Sacramento. And you notice that some county have different tax rate for different cities. So we'll just say it's, it's uh, in Sacramento County. 
uh, in general. If, if your city is not listed as one of these, then it just falls under the general Sacramento uh, here. So if not in Citrus Heights, Elk Grove, Folsom, Galt, Alton, then just pick the generic Sacramento County here. Uh, same apply for all the other state in California. Make sure that you do change this county name. If it's not, it, this, it only change it here. So for example, if I put uh, San Jose, and I click on here, it'll say San Jose down here, but it'll say Sacramento up there. Make sure you just type it in, and you put whatever the county is. And then I'll do this. And because the county is called Santa Clara, oops, you know, I think this is the one where they stop. You know, it's still there to see. Yeah, you see how it stopped here? Um, we're, I think they're still updating it. So Santa Clara is not there. We'll just do that for the sake of this. You put that in there. Uh, I'll change this back to second. Okay. So these are transfer tax. Even though it said city, county, uh, they wouldn't let us rename it. So we use the state. It's called a county. Uh, just keep that in mind. This means the city. And these are transfer tax that are imposed by the city. And uh, usually the seller pays for it. It's all customary, depending upon the county. In Sacramento, uh, the seller usually pays 100% of it. But if in your county it doesn't, well, I'll show you how to change that. If they want impound, there's an escrow sheet that uh, will be in the back office. And I'll pull it up here for you to look at. It looks something like this. So there's a little sheet right here. Um, I'll pull up the county or the property tax. So for the property tax, if we are closing uh, escrow, if we're closing escrow in um, March in our example here, and the first payment due is in May, we have to collect three months of property taxes and make sure that the first and second installment has been paid. So this chart will, will help you uh, determine that. If there are times when people will, um, will actually have the payment, uh, they'll close in, for example, April, but the first payment due in May because they, they close within the first week, you would always go with the first payment date. Whenever in question, which, one, which column should go with, it's always the first payment date is the date that you choose. So on here, uh, we're going to collect three months of property tax. For homeowner insurance, whenever it's a purchase, very simple. You just collect two months. If it's a refi, you go off of, go off of the other list. And on that list, um, it will tell you when does the homeowner insurance expires and when you're, you're closing. Now, this one's the closing, not the payment date. So if we're closing in March and they already have homeowner insurance, uh, it expired in November, we'll take that. And so this is only for refi purchase. Uh, again, pretty simple. Just put in two here for the reserve and then 12 months here for um, the upfront. So they'll need to pay one year uh, upfront and they'll need to have two months of imp uh, reserve in the impound account, okay? If, unless there's Unpaid property taxes, um, you would put it in here. If there's any like uh, pest, uh, pest report or home inspection fee, even though we're not going to pay for it, we need to list it. So you just put it here according to the contract. Okay. So for example, if there's a pest, like a home inspection, you just put O for other, and then you'll put um, you know to whoever uh, pest company. And it's usually like a home inspection, like 350. Um, make sure you don't check this box here. Uh, it's not part of the prepaid finance charge. Um, if they have, let's say, a uh, termite report, uh, you know, if they list it and it's part of the settlement, they've got to list it here. Okay. I put pest, but I mean home inspection. Uh, 
and we'll call this one seventy five. Just uncheck that. All right. So these are just additional settlement down there. Uh, this would complete your initial fee worksheet. However, if there, if the seller is paying for some of these fees, and I'm going to show you what's customary in Sacramento, uh, you need to check with uh, on the on the purchase agreement uh, if it's who's paying for it. In our in our county, seller usually pays for all of it. Right now, it's saying borrower. If you click on this fee sheet here, um, changing this doesn't really do anything. I don't know why they do it, but you've got to actually move this percentage. I just control X per cut and paste it in here. You notice that I can't click OK until I click out of it, and I'll hit OK. Now I'll change to seller. And then same thing here, I just cut it, and I'll paste this here, click out of it, hit OK. So usually transfer taxes are paid by the seller. Um, it's also customary here that the owner's title insurance is paid by the seller. So I'll cut that, I'll paste it here. And um, it's also customary here that uh, escrow is split 50-50 between the seller and the buyer. So I'll click borrower. I'll type in 50 and 50. And these are percentage. And then it'll calculate it for me. And then it'll change to multiple. Okay. So those are how you, if uh, the seller's paying for it. Now, it will show up regardless um, as a total closing cost. But what you will see is that out of that $6,273, 286650 is paid by the seller. So the closing cost to the borrower is the, the difference of those two numbers. So I have all the information here. If I hit this uh, print button and I hit print preview, this is what is called the fee worksheet. So this fee worksheet will tell us the loan amount, uh, the, the interest rate, the term, and the name of the title when we prepared it, our loan number that's generated. And it'll have your name and, uh, and uh, license number and everything up here, along with our company information. You can show them, and this is just the fee uh, sheet breakdown. It's not required uh, to disclose to the borrower, but this is the format there. They're, they, it's easier to explain. Um, so here's our fee. Anything uh, kind of above this line, above closing escrow, are all uh, reflecting lender charges. Okay. Everything down here are all escrow fees, and then these are additional charges. And then from the reserve down to here are all the, the prepaid items. So we have those um, there, and anything in parentheses is one, either a credit, lender's credit, or two, is paid outside of closing. So anything that's a uh, POC, if you forget what it means, you can scroll uh, down, and it'll tell you PFC stands for prepaid finance charges, FHA is allowable closing costs, and then the POC pays A outside of closing. If it said B is for borrowers, S for seller, broker, lender, third party, correspondent. So this is your fee worksheet that most people would say, can you send me uh, the fee breakdown or an estimate? This is what you would send them. Okay. Now, you can send them like this. There's, there's, uh, this is the, uh, there's, uh, you know, the correct way to send it. However, in my experience, um, if you put down how much you make, they always try to negotiate with you, which isn't negotiable. Um, so this is not your good faith. If you just send this here, you can remove this here because if there's a positive 4,200 and a negative 4,200, it will be the same. It's wiping it's zeroing itself out. So if you remove both, it, uh, the bottom line will be the same. What I mean by the bottom number is right now, we have a purchase price of 350. They're borrowing 280. Seller's paying 2866.50. Closing cost is 62.73. Our uh, prepay item is 36.75.59. Uh, for them, it's like, how much am I coming in with? So I'm going to write down this number here. Let me go. Seventy-seven four hundred one. Seventy-seven four one twenty-nine is our cash to close. Okay, and I, all I'm illustrating you. Um, I wish I had the screen capture. Actually, I can do it. Let me let me zoom in here. Whoops.
So on here, I don't know if we can zoom in. Okay. So on here, um, you'll see that the cash to close include our 4,200 and all that. Um, but their their cash to close, they're they're really just concerned how much money do they have to come in with? 77,401. That includes their down payment of 70,000. Okay. Um, sellers paying for this here. And if I close this here, I'm gonna. I'm going to, actually I'm going to go out of this, we don't need it anymore. If I go up to, um, and, and however you want to do it, um, just make sure you put it back, okay? We're going to take out this lender pay compensation, which is this 150, and then also this here, 150, but remember, our compensation uh, that was shown here, this 1.732, it include our processing. So you got to remove this processing here too in order for it to zero itself out. Okay, uh, got a little look here. So we just want to make sure whatever we remove here, it reflects it um, with the discount point. Okay, so we want to remove that and it should be the same amount. Um, actually, I'm sorry, uh, one point. Uh, yep, so we should do the same there. Um, Actually, our compensation with the, uh, yeah, it should equal the same on the compensation here. Um, actually, you know what, let me, because that 650 is already included, um, throwing this out, it shouldn't have included in the 650. Let me look here, 1.73. So our first number, let, let me back up, let me back up uh, uh, a bit here. Just make sure 1.14. Okay. Um, let, let's let's let me let me do it back again. So our lender's credit here, uh, because we have the 650, uh, is shown as we're, we're making 1.5 plus a 650. We have to, and I'll I'll adjust it. Uh, I just figured out is that. Uh, correctly is we look at this we got to add whatever numbers here you see that 1.73 because that's our compensation right there so we want to when it defaults to this we want to change it to 1.73 because that is the lender's credit we have so it equals these two right here so let me just start over uh, or get back our number here 76757 Okay, so this is the correct cash to close, uh, 76,757. So I, I think we, uh, what we have to do, because the reason why on um, the one that have a flat fee instead of uh, a 75 basis point, um, you have to put plug in this number, okay? Replace whatever number shows up here into the line item we have there, but I'm gonna take a screenshot here. So I want to clarify one thing. Uh, usually if, if, if it's just a 1.75 where it's a 25 basis point, you don't have to convert it. Then you can just uh, put, you can leave it the way it is. But if uh, there's a flat fee up here, you need to change this lender's credit to reflect whatever is your, your total compensation uh, shown on here. So if you did it manually, you need to do that. Okay, or else the number's not gonna be right. So make sure you, you put this there. So now, if we do this, um, it should look like it should look like 650. You're gonna get a uh, you're gonna charge four uh, four uh, 420 bucks. If you add this uh, or 4200 plus the 650, 
it should roughly equal this, the 48.44, um, okay? And we're off a few bucks, but that's, that's where it is. So what, what I recommend is that you just remove these two fees, take off the 650, and delete this. And when you do that, um, the cash you close should still roughly be the same. We were off by six bucks or something like that. So if you show the, the borrower this amount, uh, 767.57, and then if you remove those two, it's roughly about six bucks off, kind of like there, okay? So I just prefer to show them um, this because it really it boils down to what's, what's in it for me or what does it cost me, the borrower. So it looks cleaner up here. Uh, there's, uh, it seems like you're not charging them anything because uh, the lender is paying because they are not. The borrower uh, cash to close is the same thing. Okay? It's just a matter of how much you want to disclose. So you can show it to them. Uh, it just I find that through my experience that uh, they will negotiate with you. Okay? I'm going to check the question here. Um, so the question that Tammy asked is, where do you put the deposit that went into escrow? In other words, the earnest money deposit, EMD. Um, so where you would put that information when they're doing a purchase, since we're doing a purchase example here? It would show up uh, on the bottom right here. And in order for it to show up, you need to go into uh, two places. The first thing you're going to do <coughs> is on, if you go to page three, there's a section that says cash deposit. You put title company, and we'll just uh, call it <coughs> $5,000. You put it here on page four, it'll carry it over as cash deposit. Okay, so it, whatever you put there, it actually carries over here. So just put it on page three under here. It'll say cash deposit, and it'll carry over to page four, which if you look at this section here, it looks exactly the same as your fee worksheet on the bottom see that so they're all uh, about the same information just shown on different places so when you put the on page three it'll carry over here um, you can do the same thing you type it here just select that uh, but I would recommend doing it on page three on the top and then it'll carry over here um, another good question is where do you put seller's credit you put seller's credit here they give 7500 bucks you put it there it'll reduce their cash to close okay so seller's credit cash deposit um, there might be other one, but usually it's just sellers credit and, and, and cash deposit there. All right. So we're going to kind of keep it to the basic um, on the fee worksheet, just for you guys can do the, the, the traditional one. Uh, for those that are that you want to learn a little bit more, uh, we can talk about uh, kind of the other the other type. But today it's just to kind of get you to generate a fee worksheet, show you that you can click a few buttons um, and then it can generate for you, with the exception of these impound. You got to refer to the spreadsheet, and all of those should be in the back office for you uh, to download uh, this, the the chart. And it's up to you if you want to disclose this or not. Uh, make sure that you you check the numbers before you remove them to make sure that they remain relatively the same uh, when you, you you take them out. So when you're done, you cannot leave it like this. If you leave it like this, your good faith estimate is not going to be correct. You got to put it back. You got to put the 650, put your lender pay comp at 150, and you put your lender's credit at 1.73. This has to look like this, or else your good faith estimate is going to be off by 5,000 bucks or 48.44. Okay? It, it's just a, a matter of uh, salesmanship, if you would, uh, if you want to show, uh, you know, less fees. But all in all, in all the, the bottom line, what's going out of their pocket should be the same. Okay. Any questions on that? Um, you might want to watch the video again. I know people always get, uh, they trip over this one uh, the most. Um, I wanted to redo this video because the first time we did it, it wasn't all set up. And right now, it is actually working, um, and it should be quite, quite simple for you to do it. Okay? Uh, we'll make a checklist of items that you just need to click on to make sure that you, you click all those items. All right. Any questions? So when you do an anti-steering, it's essentially two loan option or more, two to three loan option for your client. A client might say, well, 4.375 is great, but I want to lower my closing costs. I want something with less closing costs. What does that look like? 
You can use the anti-steering disclosure. So um, if you reshuffle your toolbar kind of the way uh, I instructed you to, the next one will be anti-steering. If you click on this, and uh, my advice to you is make sure your, your first file, everything is exactly the way you want it. And that way when you duplicate it, you don't, if you make an error, uh, you don't have to change it in two different loan scenarios. So the first thing you do is you hit create for loan scenario one. Remember borrow file is, is the file that defaults whenever you open the file. That's the file that will show up. Everything here is just a, a parking space for you to um, have additional loan, op loan option. If you can see, if, uh, see here, you can have up to six more different loan scenario. Uh, and then uh, plus your primary be seven different loan scenario. On the anti-steering disclosure, you would only show three. You can only show three loan option. Okay. We're going to create one, and I'm going to copy this one here. It'll copy everything over. I'm going to hit edit. So if, when I hit create, it changes the button to edit, swap, and clear, and makes it clickable. I'm going to hit uh, edit, and then you'll see this drop-down bar that appears on the right-hand side here. If you see this, that means you're in the anti-steering screen. You're not in the primary loan. We're going to go. Uh, it should be on loan one. We're going to go to fee worksheet. All we're going to do is change two things here. That's all we're going to do. If we pull up our, uh, our sheet here, we're going to offer them one rate above and run one rate below. Okay? And if I'm going to do the 4.5, I'm going to keep it simple first. I'm going to go with a 4.25. So I'm going to do a 4.25, which will increase my discount from a 0.114 to a 1.06. So I'm just going to change those two numbers. I'm going to go 4.25, 1.060. I go to my, this is, I'm still in loan scenario one. I'm going to go with a 4.25. I'm going to scroll down to where my discount point is. Instead of 0.114, I'm going to change to 1.060. I'm done. That's it. Now I just gave them a different loan option. Everything should remain the same. Okay. So if, if I were to look at this, I go back to my anti-steering. Um, if I were to do two loan option, if I look at the question, it's at lowest interest rate. Out of these two, my 4.25 is the lower of the two, which is my scenario one. I would select it because it's a fixed rate. I go in this column. I put scenario one. Lowest origination costs. If I go to my adjusted origination costs, this one has a lower origination cost than this one. So I would pick, this is called a borrow acquire file. I hit borrow. <coughs> if I actually print this out and do a print preview, you see the two loan option uh, that we have. It'll say uh, anti-steering disclosure. The lowest interest rate is four and a quarter. The one with the lower origination costs right here, adjusted origination costs is uh, the 4.375. So the higher the, the, the interest rate, the lower your closing costs. So at, uh, estimated um, cash you close is 66000 uh, versus 64000 Okay, uh, This is above, and because I put like 7500 bucks for them already put into escrow and seller's credit and all that stuff. So that's why the number is showing this here. Okay. Normally you would just do two rate. And the, the rate that you would choose would be your lowest interest rate. So if you're selling them the 4.25, you put this and the most lender will accept this third row to be 4.25. Again, you're going to put one rate higher. Uh, if you're, you know, uh, whatever rate you want to sell should be in the lowest interest rate. The one uh, should be one rate higher to show lower origination. And then this one, the lowest interest rate without risky feature should be this rate. Okay. So I'll show you what it should look like. Is the lowest interest rate is scenario one. So it will show here. So this is what an anti-steering should look like. Lowest interest rate, um, a higher rate with a lower origination cost, and then your first option here. That is accepted across all lenders if you do it this way. If you do a third loan option, some lenders will kick it back and say you need to do it differently. You're going to trouble your client to have to them sign again. So it's just stick with this formula. All the lenders will accept it. But if you want to show it for illustrative purposes, you can put a third loan option here. Okay, the third loan option would normally be um, your your middle rate. So it would probably go lower interest rate, 
So it'll be lowest rate, highest rate, in-between rate. So I'm going to do an in-between rate for, for uh, those that want to see three loan option. Whenever you hit create, it always copy whatever's in this borrow file. I'm going to hit create. I'm going to hit edit. I'm going to go back to my sheet. Because I already put a 4.25, I got a 4.375, uh, I'm going to go with a 4.5. Now this is, I saved this one because it's a little tricky. It shows a credit of, four, of 0.779, no longer a discount point. So you need to know where to put that 0.779. So I'm going to go to my fee worksheet. I'm in scenario two. My fee worksheet here. Excuse me. Um, I'm going to change the rate to a 4.5. I'm going to go down to my discount point. Because it's no longer a discount, it's becoming a credit. I need to delete that discount point. You see this discount? You're going to move it down to the lender's credit. That lender's credit is of 0.779. So I'm going to put 0.779. So this becomes my third option. Okay. So I'm going to, if I go back to my uh, anti-steering, and if I were to list it um, the same way here, if I go from lowest interest rate 4.25, scenario one. Um, the highest rate, which is the lowest origination cost, because if you look across the board, this is a negative. It's lower than these three. It'll be my scenario two. The higher the rate, the lower the origination cost. And the third one will be my borrower right in the middle, the rate right in the middle. When I print this here, you'll see the 4.25, 4.5, 4.375. So this is kind of the, low, the lower interest rate without risky feature, uh, kind of in between. And you get your closing costs uh, being the highest, the lowest, and in between. Okay. So that's how you create your anti-steering in case uh, some, some, someone said, I'd like to see different loan option. You would do that. So I see some question I'm going to ask this here. If you send that out, it's not an official anti-steering then if you just give them the loan options. Yeah, you can, you can give them this here um, uh, for uh, as a loan option, uh, but it does state that uh, they received anti-steering. They can they can sign it if they want, but the one that um, uh, they really need to acknowledge is the one that uh, the lender sends out. So they they would sign this when we submit the loan, and then they would sign a second copy uh, issued with the lender's name on it. Uh, but you can give it to them; it's not a big deal. Yeah, it's not. They're not signing it. They're not doing the full disclosure. Uh, you tell them that this is the loan option. Um, so on here, uh, those are the, the answers steering for those options. Okay. Any question? I know that uh, there was a question here. Let me go back to it. Uh, Gilbert, your question is, uh, where do you go to get your NMLS license online? I'll answer that after the class. Uh, we just kind of stick to the topic here. So to go back to here, um, do you guys have any question on the anti-steering? Okay, these are going to go by pretty quick here. The desktop originator, what I'm going to walk you through is how to sign up for it and then do uh, the quiz or the actual test so you guys can uh, run your own automated unwritten system uh, there. Okay, so here's what I'm going to show you. A lot of, uh, I like to show it the easy way. And the easy way to do it is go to Google. And on Google.com, if you type in um, desktop originate, originator broker sign up, so search for desktop originator broker sign up. If you were to type that, like to write down the URL, uh, you'll see it after I click on it here. So um, actually, I'll copy the link here. And I'll post it here for those. Um, well, actually, I don't think that's a link. Uh, I'll paste it after I get there. So go to Desktop Originator Broker Sign Up, and it's the first link. Click on that link, and what you see is uh, DO Online Registration Tool for Brokers. Click on that link. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually copy this link. I'm going to paste it in there so you guys can go straight to it. 
That link is um, HTTPS, www.fannymae.com and so forth. I'm just going to send it to you guys. So um, for those attending the webinar, you guys should be able to see that link, copy and paste and save that, or just do the Google search. When we click on this here, you're going to have to agree. You're opening a separate account. Uh, do understand that at the very bottom, it does say that you do they do charge you 20 bucks to run each each of these deal finding. However, if you use our approved lenders, uh, certain certain lenders will pay that 20 bucks for you, so you would never have to pay that 20 dollars. But should you ever uh, incur that 20 dollars, we'll refund you that 20 bucks upon closing. So if you don't close that deal, you might lose that 20 bucks. Okay, kind of the cost of doing business. Uh, but like I said, you don't want to pay anything. Just go through our approved lenders, um, and, and they can run it through there. For you. So hit agree. You fill out all your information, and as you go through the fields, uh, make sure when it said company information, you want to put this information if you're with you Elite NorCal. It'll be Elite NorCal Corporation. That's the BRE. Okay. If you are on the DBO side, it needs to say ERS Nationwide Incorporated. So I'm going to type that up here for you. So this is for uh, DBO, and this is for BRE. The address you're going to use is 7412 LC Avenue, Mesa, Sacramento, California, California, it's late. The phone number you can put it for yourself. You can put your own phone numbers in there, but just make sure you put this here. Uh, so you fill out all this information. I'll just put it here. get to the next field, it's going to ask for billing. That's your information. Okay, so you need to put your information on how uh, the credit card is going to run. So um, you can keep the name the same here. Put your personal address because that when it, when it runs the credit card, it'll run that. When you hit next, you've got to fill out your, your credit card information. Again, you're not going to get charged unless you actually run it through it. And it actually check it, so if it doesn't work, it, I can't show you the demo. But the following screen, you're going to select uh, your lenders. Uh, the lenders that I want you to sign up for, that will allow you to do it, uh, if you write this down. And sometimes they take it away, uh, but this is a good start. Is uh, You want to go with Freedom. You want to go with New Pen. These are just the one that offered the free uh, sponsor for the DO. Doesn't mean you have to submit the loan to them. Uh, but like I said, if they see us abusing it, running it, and not send, sending any deals, they'll cut off that, that free DO. So make sure if you intend on, on the, or running it through the system and don't want to pay for it, send at least you know, a deal or so every so often to them. Okay. Um, and there's a list. You can also ask your account executive that they provide it. Uh, not all of them will. Uh, we got, um, it's, it's actually, it's called Broker Solution but it's actually new American funding. You have JMAC. And then all of these lenders, if you pull up the approved lenders list, you want to put the account executive name.
this one's outdated, but um, here you see you see the county executive name. Uh, make sure you put it in there, okay? So you'll have, uh, there's another one, I think, um, Homebridge can do it for you. That should be enough. And then as you want to add more, just ask them if they, they provide free DO. So start with those five. They'll give you free a, uh, DO, and they'll sponsor you. I'll leave it up for a second here. So sign up for that, get your own login. You don't get charged anything unless you use it. But the reason why I want you to get your own login is to complete the exercise. There's homework um, or practice case that they will allow you to do. So under, once you register, um, go to a DO, under the Learning Center, it will say DO Training Index. Click on that, and there's practice case. Uh, right here, there are six. Even though it said seven, they took off one of them. Uh, read the introduction. Actually, do this, and they have to give you a dummy credit report. They give you dummy file for W twos, tax returns, all that, and then uh, go through it. It'll give you through the common uh, loan center that you'll probably run to or, uh, run through. Purchase loans, cash out refinance. If you do a cash out refinance with a subordinating uh, loan, meaning like a second mortgage. They say, I want to keep my second mortgage just for a rainy day, uh, then you, they'll teach you how to do that. How to run VA loan, how to run FHA loan, how to do high balance. These are probably the most common that you're going to run into. The number four was a heart loan. I'm not sure why they took it off, uh, but actually they moved it up here. So if you do refi plus, and they actually have a video for you to do it here. Um, so the heart loan is up here. It used to be number four. And so they moved it up there. Okay. So you can technically do uh, seven case, and I want you to practice that before you actually run a live deal. Uh, that's how you're going to be able to get three solid deal finding, approved eligible finding uh, under your belt. Once you get those three under your belt, you'll be able to uh, get your own pre-approval letter. We want to make sure that you know how to run it. Again, because you know whatever you put in, it get, it get you approved eligible, and you put in the wrong information, you set your borrower on a home, you know, home purchase chase for three months, and they should have never started in a, in a looking at home in the first place. So I wanted to walk you through that. This will give you all the information you need for the training. Uh, they train it way better than I do, so I leave, <laughs> I leave it up to the pro for them to do it. Uh, this is more of a, uh, a processing job, uh, but you don't, you don't have to do this. Uh, the reason why we teach you to do this is if you want it for the sake of the speed or, or, or convenience, when you're at an open house in front of an agent and you want to pre-approve them, you want to know how to do this. You don't want to wait uh, over the weekend and wait till Monday, which who knows how many other loan officers in line waiting for the same thing, you won't get it to Wednesday. So just that five day gap means you could have lost that realtor relationship. So learn how to do this. Uh, and it, it, it's not necessary, the process will do it, uh, but it is, it's good for you to understand how to do that. Okay. All right, any question on how to sign up for DO and do those uh, <coughs> So once you run it through DO, you got an approved eligible, and it said, hey, uh, based upon what you submitted, um, looked like we got an uh, eligible uh, a client, and the property seems like it's eligible. Um, it does ask for a property address, but you can also put to be determined. You want to send it out, if, especially if it's kind of iffy, uh, to your account executive, and, and ask them, uh, hey, you know, uh, can you do this type of loan? So here's what I'm going to show you, is that we have a system that will send out um, again, I forget the password. Let me just type it in here. No problem, we'll wrap it up here. So um, once, once we go in here, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Oops. So um, we have this little template 
uh, when we fill out our, our system, you can copy this, and I'll send you guys the thing. If you um, just put, if you fill in this information, property type, occupancy type, transaction type, location, credit score, doc type, property value, purchase uh, price, loan to value, uh, combined loan to value, loan amount for the first, loan amount, loan program for second, debt to income ratio. Put in the, the goal, what you're trying to accomplish, um, and then add, you know, any, any challenges that you're, you're aware of, and then just any information. Usually, that's my question, where we put additional information. And you send it out to your, the approved lenders list that you create on your list here. Uh, if you just create a list, if you copy and paste all of this email address, put them in the BCC field um, of your email. So if I went here and I put, uh, let me just go, and then you just kind of put your BCC field here, uh, that way blind car carbon copy and everybody, and then just to yourself, and copy and paste uh, this, this thing in here, send it out to your all your lenders, they'll respond back to you. That's quicker than picking up the phone. Because if they say no, just don't call them back. But do be respectful of their time and reply back and say thanks for taking a look at it. Because if you don't, they're, gonna, uh, they're most uh, likely not going to respond the next time. But if they know that there is a live person behind it, uh, they'll keep continuing to respond. So that's what we do, but through our system here, because um, this one wasn't built all the way in, it just pulled whatever it did. Okay. So do run your loan scenario with the account executive. Again, don't just based upon the loan shifter or the rate sheet, uh, it doesn't go through all the guidelines. And I show you the email blast uh, to the account executive. Uh, Pre-approval letter, we do have our pre-approval letter, but right now until you guys actually run your own DO, uh, it will be sent out by the processor. And that DO, uh, the approval letter just kind of show you what it looks like. So our pre-approval letter um, is 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 uh, binding, legally binding. So that's why we don't uh, issue it unless you know how to show it. So it just uh, shows that we did verify uh, their credit, income, and asset uh, is subject to the property uh, clearing, underwriting, and any additional uh, any additional uh, condition that the lender might require. Uh, but this is a legally binding document. That's why we, we hang on to make sure. And plus, secondly, we we don't want to dilute our brand. And uh, if lender or real estate agent keep working with us and the loan never closes, then uh, most likely listing agent won't accept our pre-approved letters in the future. Okay. And then notice of action taken form. If we take, uh, if you, let's say you need to deny the loan, go up to form, and you have to make a decision within 30 days from the date of loan application. Date of loan application is when they sign the loan application or the credit report whichever is the earliest, okay? So if we go up to form, uh, down to uh, notice of action taken, it's gonna default to what we want it to say. And I would always say, we do not grant credit to uh, applicant uh, based upon this term or term requested. Okay, so you just need to insert whatever else. So for example, uh, if it's a credit issue, check the right one. Um, try to not check too many things. Just check one. If you if one reason is good enough, because uh, if you check one thing and they said, "Well, you never told me this," then it becomes a big issue. Uh, just check those button here. So I'm just going to say, um, you know, excessive obligation, meaning your debt to income ratio is too high. And and then uh, you fill, you can click on this. It'll copy all the information from uh, here. So you can put the middle one. We just do that. And it pulled the date and that everything here hit on today's date. Um, if there's a co-borrower, you can do the same thing, but we don't have one. Um, and here you can just put email. If you email it to them and you deliver it today, put your name here. Go up to uh, print. And you would mail this to them, okay? So on here, because uh, I didn't fill in, uh, or this wasn't a real file, it was say for the uh, property address and everything else like that. Uh, description taken here, uh, it would just say primary reason. Uh, excessive application, we do not uh, grant credit to this one here. So even if you don't type anything in here, it's fine because we will explain it here, okay? 
But if you want that form to fill out, you can just type it in up here. Um, actually, I'm sorry. You do fill it up here. So, um, you know, notice of credit denial is usually uh, the, the, the uh, case. If they cancel and they never responded after all documentation requests, they probably went somewhere else. You just put withdrawn. Um, and then incomplete application, if they, they were missing those. Uh, counter offer um, is that, uh, so they apply for, um, you know, 96.5% down. I'm sorry, 3.5% down. You counter them 5%. So you can do that. And then just say, we, we can't approve you on the, the 96.5 loan to value, but we do 95. So whatever it is here, we put it here. Uh, Humda action taken. And just fill these out here. So if uh, it was application withdrawn, you put that. Action date here. And notice detail, you can type it in, just put, you know, borrower cancel. And date denied. And then if you uh, description of capital plus credit, you do that. So you put borrow cancel. Print this here. And it'll fill out your form uh, for what, what you put here. Okay. So that's just your notice of action taken. Here's the second page. It'll fill this information here, the credit score. And then we're compliant. Just make sure you, you do email it or you mail it however you do it. Okay. Um, if you want to sign it, you can. You can print it out. Just uh, hit sign here. Okay. Do you guys have any question regarding... Um, the information that we went over tonight, and I'll, I'll take a look here. Um, I know we went a little bit over, so I appreciate you guys staying. If you guys have any questions, I'll hang around for a little bit here. And so uh, to kind of give you a heads up on next week, now let me cover that. Next week we will be covering um, creating and explaining the disclosure signing packet. We'll go over how to fill out uh, the good faith estimate, the truth in lending, the uh, mortgage loan disclosure statement, how to do the print group, and there's additional broker lending disclosure that you'll need, along with trading needs lists and opening escrow uh, through Calix Point. And this will take you through uh, the, the bare minimum what a loan officer should do in order to create a loan package to submit to central processing. All right, thank you guys. I'll hang around, and if you have any questions, I'll be here for another about 10-15 minutes.